Hey guys, this is Real Appalachia with Melody and Shane. And today we are coming to you from Lynch, Kentucky in Harlan County. Absolutely. We're just outside of Portal 31. Yes. This is the old mine portal to get into the big mines down here in Lynch. And we'll get into a little bit more of the history and show you a little bit more of this town. Yes. Very fascinating place though. I'm anxious it is. to check it out. Yes. Let's get on the road. All right. Okay guys, we're coming at you from Harlan County, Kentucky, but it's not just any part of Harlan County, Kentucky. We're in Lynch, Kentucky. Yes. And is this your first time here? This is my first time here. This right. is my first time in Harlan County. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, you won't forget it. Nothing yes. else will happen to you, right? If you, if you make it up, which you probably won't. I will make it out of Harlan alive. <laughs> I want in to do that. deep dark hills. Okay. Kentucky. Do you know the rest of this? Yeah, the I do. There's no I need to sing it. I've come so far, though. No. It was there I read on the hillside graves. Don't stop me now. You'll never leave Harlan alive. If y'all could see my face. You'll know the rest yeah. of it. My favorite part. Do you know why Lynch was named Lynch? No, please tell us. 
for Thomas Lynch, the head of the uh, U.S. Coal and Coke Company. And you got some information about that, right? I do. U.S. Coal and Coke is who developed this. So this is a <laughs> pure coal mining town. It didn't exist until mines came and built everything that was made down here. Yeah. And you can imagine what that was like. Now, that dated back to 1917. And, of course, U.S. Coal and Coke was part of U.S. Steel. Mm -hmm. So they did things right. This was in super important to the left here. You'll see that. This is the old Lynch grade and high schools. Mm. Beautiful buildings. I just hate to see beautiful buildings like this just in ruin like they are. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's no need for it at this point, but it, it'd be, and, and they've saved a lot of these buildings. But yeah, I mean, I guess there's just nothing to do with a big, huge building like that anymore. But yeah, very true. Yeah. Kind of sad, you know, and you can tell the the skill that went into that, and you have to think. I don't know this to be true, but there's so many different diverse nationalities that came here and. The Italians were known for having great stonemasons, a lot of those were. Yeah. They built a lot of these towns. Okay. Um, imagine they probably had a hand in building those. If somebody knows better, correct me, please. But I would, I usually assume that because most of these towns, you know, the Italian stonemasons did build those five okay. buildings. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I read in the 40s that Lynch had a population of 10,000 and the 2019 estimate was only 644. Yeah, chosen. So decline of coal mining mm -hmm. and the need for less employees when they did mine and it just gradually took started to, to decline into what it is now yeah take a couple of turns along the way here okay yeah back in the day they had a movie theater and a hospital um so like a lot of towns those things left after the populations declined yeah here's the catholic church mm -hmm. of the resurrection beautiful building as well and there's something called Solomon's Porch and I'm not sure what that used to be I don't know. said retreat I'm guessing like some kind of Christian retreat thing Could be. so welcome to the porch sit and rock look at God's beauty have a little talk with Jesus it's have neat. a little talk with Jesus have a little talk with Jesus you oh, just in a singing mood today huh Wine in a listen mood, so <laughs> pipe down. <laughs> I've got a funny feeling that most everybody watching this video is on Team Melody on this one. Uh, oh, Lord. You know what they say about Harlan County, though, don't you? What's that? The sun comes up about 10 in the morning and the sun goes down. I tried, folks. Well, three, that's it. I'm done. Well, these people got to block here, so I'll start around here in a carport. Let's just pray I don't hit these poles. It'd be good to get another shot of that retreat, Solomon's porch, anyway. I heard it's some kind of uh, Christian based retreat, but I don't know that much more about it. I remember reading about it, but my memory is about as good as my driving. I don't know much about it at all. Well, that settles that then. <laughs> We'll get back down here. There's more. There's Portal 31, which unfortunately is closed today. I'd love to do that. It's I a, know. I would love to do that too. Get to ride back through the old mine. And yeah. We'll have to do that again. Sounds some like other fun. Time. Oh, it's great fun. They have. They've done. They did this thing right. So, Morezu Center Ministries. Center they have a gift shop hmm. and a Christian center. Stables. Hmm. Just says Solomon's Porch Retreat Center. So maybe some of our viewers will have heard a little bit about it and can tell us about it. So. You will usually do know. Yes. I like seeing these big old Catholic churches in these really little towns because I don't feel like we have a huge population of Catholic no. left, but it shows that we did have a lot of um, Europeans come yeah. to this area back in the day for coal mining. Oh, yeah. Here's, yeah. You can see a little bit more. We're getting closer and closer to the actual. There's a post office on the right. It's a newer building. And you can see just ahead, too, some of the coal mining operation. We'll stop and take a look at that a little bit closer. Yeah. And they've done a great job of marking these things, too. Good job. Very much appreciate. So here's right to the right is Portal 31. Mm -hmm. It's an underground mine tour next right. Man, I hate that it's not open. I hate it for you. It's great. Yeah. Hate to rub it in. 
to make a trip out do to you Mexico. though do no, you really? really i've been i've been in it <laughs> lamp house coffee i really wish they were open i could use a cup of coffee yeah we'll park up here near the portal looks a lot like the that lamp house number two building that is really neat and the fire station right there yep fire station we got i think it might be a gift shop or something now okay not sure but here's portal 31. lamp city hall is what it says yeah as you can see, that's the portal entering the mine. Mine number 31, back in 1920, it shows. Hmm. It's a really neat area here. Yeah. Done a great job of They said they were built so well. And part of that's because U.S. Steel was top of the food chain. You're talking about they had to have enough employees. They had to have the good workers and all that stuff. So they had better amenities, better homes. You'll see that's why a lot of these houses are still in good shape and everything else. Is yeah. They had to invest in it because... They had to have the coal. They right. couldn't just be fly by night. So that's why they paid for some of the top top men. And that's why there's a lot of pride anyway from Gary I mean from um, Lynch will let you know. And I just mentioned Gary, that's funny because they were also on US Steel. Okay. And it's the same kind of thing when anytime we show one of these towns people go wild because there was a lot of pride working in one of these top coal mines. Oh so yeah. Let me hop out and look around. What do you say? Okay, let's do it. So we'll start out here just outside the portal. Tell us a little bit about the history. You know, again, it says 1917 U.S. United States Steel Corporation began developing of the coal mining facilities, and the first coal was shipped November 2nd, 1917. Mm -hmm. And in 1919, 1.2 million tons were shipped. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty bad gun. Yeah. We we'll walk up here and show you inside the portal as much as we can. And smell the coal. Yeah. Through there into the portal. Knowing's not enough. Safety signs, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Let's walk around and see what else we can do. I like seeing that old light up there. It's neat. And this is the lamp house down here we'll walk to. Okay. Yeah, we'll walk down to this lamp house, but you know, one time there was a 120 room hotel here, mm. a bank, a hospital, one of the largest company stores in the world. Wow. You know, they had elementary and high schools and a thousand homes were served by outhouses connected to a central sewage. Wow. It's amazing, really. Look in here and see, this is where they operate the Portal 31 from. Yeah. So this is where you go buy your tickets and whatnot. Okay. Looks like a little gift shop now. Very neat. Yeah. At one time it was the lamp house, though. Yeah. Well, as you can tell, it's still very a pro coal area. Yes. I mean, it, even though there's not nearly as many miners as there once were here, it's still such a loyalty to James R. Stewart Memorial. So this lamp house was built about the same time as n number 31 mine portal shortly after it was built and again during World War II. More than 2,000 electric cap lamps were issued to miners each day. Flame safety lamps were also issued to each foreman and fire boss. These lamps were repaired, maintained, and recharged by lamp house men in this building. So, very interesting. So we just came from Lamp House Number Two, and right across from there is the built in 1921 in Jamestown the building, the fire station, which is now Lynch City Hall. Yes. There's the office and the bathhouse over there. It is 313 feet long by 40 feet wide. So yeah, it is pretty big. Um, it housed the general office personnel, including the general superintendent, accounting, safety, engineering, and personal personnel departments, as well as providing bathing facilities for men and foremen. It was designed to accommodate 1,500. The bathhouse at its peak served more than 4,500 men. 71 showers. Wow. Yes. And live stream jets to mix cold water. A smoke room was provided on the church street side of the building for training mine rescue workers. 
General offices were moved to the present City Hall building in 1956 and number 31 mine office moved into the bathhouse building. The facility was closed in 1963 when number 31 mine closed. Okay, okay that across the road is the old train depot. Mm -hmm. See a little caboose and engine right there in the parking lot and a bear. So, there's a coffee shop down here now. Yeah. Lamp House Coffee, and it's really good when it's open. Unfortunately, we missed it today. Yeah. Here's a little memorial to that one is for John L. Lewis, United Mine Workers president back in their heyday. Mm -hmm. This is in honor of all the men who lost their lives during the coal mining days at Lynch District. Well, there's yes. a lot of names there in it. It Goodness is, gracious. yeah. Sure is. Additional fatalities, fatalities. So yeah, it's got the years. Actually, some of the most recent ones, 1997, Barney Clay Jr. Oh, wow, yeah. It was all the way back to 1918. So just mm -hmm. what a year after it was opened, that fatalities here. And they got some other names. And... Welcome Portal 31, erected with appreciation and memory of all individuals and organizations that have made this once dream become reality. Yeah. I want to show you guys this conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. It transported coal at a rate of 500 tons per hour. It was installed in 1968. Cool. All right, this is the district machine shop. It was completed in the early 1920s and it was originally constructed with all glass walls. Can you imagine what that looked like. Oh yeah, beautiful. The glass was replaced with salt glazed tile in 1955. The shop housed machine tools and welding equipment to fabricate any machines and parts needed for mining coal. It was equipped with its own <laughs> gas for welding and cutting. And later additions housed hydraulic and electric repair shops. All right, what you're seeing in front of you now is the powerhouse, and it once housed the boiler operated generators. And they furnished electric power to operate the number 30 and 31 mines in support facilities. And it also actually supplied electric power to the homes in Lynch. Every home. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Mm-hmm. They originally had 450 kilowatt DC generators that they installed. And then it quickly they converted it to two 1875 KVA 6600 volt AC generators. And a cooling tower they erected beside Looney Creek, which is the water right along through here. Mm -hmm. And water was sprayed into a cooling pond in the creek. With the advent of power in 1925 from Kentucky Utilities, the generators were shut down and the boilers used to supply the steam to heat shops, bathhouse, tipple, and other support facilities in addition to several management homes. Boilers were fed with stoker coal directly from the adjacent tipple and powerhouse stacked. The powerhouse stack is 209 feet high and 14 feet to nine feet in diameter. Yep. There you go. Good job. All right, this is the number 31 mine dump and the concrete line pit is all that remains of it. Um, a rotary dump was installed in 1920 and converted to a drop bottom car dump in 1957 with the acquisition of larger mine coal cars. Before it was closed in 1963, the dump's conveyor moved coal at 500 tons per hour to the tipple. The pit is now used as a runoff sediment catch basin. All right, what you see in front of you now is the coal tipple. And the original structure was actually this concrete band that you see in front of you, and an additional 60 foot high steel oh my gosh. structure. Yeah, on top of the concrete. Can you imagine that? Oh wow. That had to be huge. It's yeah. the largest coal tip in the world when it was completed in 1930. That's amazing. That's kind of easy to believe looking at it though, isn't it? I know, but 60 more feet. Wow. Yeah. The upper steel structure was used to hand pick rock from the coal and a screen sized product into house. A huge dust collection system. Crazy, isn't it? Oh yeah. And the, it was a bin that held 4,000 tons of coal. That's amazing. Back on the road again here in Lynch, just pulling back out. And the old, we just saw that the coffee houses used to be the lunch place for them too. So 
Oh, okay. Went right under the conveyor belt we just pointed out, and then to the left, we showed the temple, and then there's a water uh, plant. It was right there, too. Yes. Right there to the left. So, so get on down here and show a little bit more of the residential area. All right. Because that's stuff kind of fascinating to me. Like I said, Lantra is just a massive, major player in the coal industry. Because of its affiliation with U.S. Steel, of course. Yeah. Town built on coal, for coal, by coal. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of loyalty to what the coal industry is still here. So they have an actual coal mining museum here in town too, right? Yes. But we was, saw that it's close. Yeah, so. I think it's technically Benham, but yeah, it's just basically in the same area, so. Yeah. And you can see the houses here, you know, even though they're somewhat typical of coal camps, they're a lot nicer, higher quality, and that's the U.S. Steel thing. Yeah. That's what you saw that in Gary too, when demo video through there but uh, a lot of camps don't even exist anymore because they were just you know smaller companies they invested less in the money and but this was a very important piece of coal property and down here not too far is the old colored school mm -hmm. and they still got it Glad, great to see that it's still in good shape yeah and so we just met a um, man in town that said they integrated around 1964, the schools. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, I like looking at these. I know, I like these little houses. This one, like I said, is a little bit better condition than most. Yes. Here's the colored school, we'll get out and show a little bit about that. All right, let's do it. All right, we're here at the Lynch Colored High School or West Main High School. I guess that was what it was named after that was integrated. The brick facility was built in 1923 by the United States Coal and Coke Company and then leased to Lynch Colored Common Graded School District. Students from Benham and Lynch enrolled in the high school. The first four graduates received their diplomas in 1928. W.L. Scholl was the principal 1939 to 1956, and he was an outstanding and progressive administrator. After Professor Shobe's retirement, Coach John V. Coleman promoted to principal. School name changed to the West Main High School, and the school had many notable students and athletes. All right, so you can see at the top, Lynch Colored Public School. Mm -hmm. All the dogs aren't happy to see us, I don't think. No. But that shows you a little bit more about the school and how large yeah. it was. Pretty good sized school. It is. EKSC Lynch Chapel. Yes. All right, let's get in the road. Yes. It says in memory of the black coal miner, so a lot of... Mm -hmm black history here in Lynch. Yes. Sure they're a huge part of the history. So leaving out of the colored school, right? Yes. Yes. Get more of the residential area. It's like here we show you as much as we can of Lynch because we're headed right back into Benham here in just a second. Yes. But it just gives you an idea of what the place of 10,000 would have looked at. And here we are. There's the welcome to Benham sign. All right. Okay, guys, we hope you enjoyed this look at Lynch, Kentucky. Yes. Another little fascinating town in Harlan County. Mm -hmm. Rich in history, for sure. And welcome to the city of Lynch. Except sure we are leaving Lynch. We're leaving Lynch, but we were welcomed here, weren't we? <laughs> we were welcomed here. I'm not sure what the bicycle tricycle theme is, but hopefully someone can tell us yeah, that. Yeah, we've seen a lot of those around. It might be like they do in a lot of these towns where they have... Like the wolves town. in Abingdon, yeah. 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 So... We hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did like it, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you on down the road. Sounds good. Thanks.